Okay, as promised, here is set B for 17 to 20 weeks post-op for my shoulder surgical reconstruction. Now, these are four exercises that I want to show you with. There is a 10 in set B, but I'm just going to go through four that I find quite interesting, and I'm going to start up with the hardest one. Now, you'll need a big power band for this. Now, this one is really good in my case because what happens when I do external rotation? Now I'm still lacking external rotation range. I've still got a bit of impingement way up here and because that's because I've had a frozen shoulder and I'm still lacking external rotation strength. So I need to do this one. Now you'll set this up with a band behind you and your band that you're doing the external rotation in front of you. It's a little bit tricky, but if you can set this up at home, this is great. This band's going on my shoulder. Now this one, like when I was doing the overhead with the band, trying to get some range. This one is dragging my shoulder in a posterior inferior direction. So it's got to be on the humerus, just like before when I was doing the flexion for the range. But this point, it's staying static. Okay, so at that point there, I'm getting a little bit of a downward posterior drag which just helps me with my rotation. It takes away some of the capsule issue and the impingement issue. Then I can focus on here. Now I've really got to hold myself in this position because that band's pretty strong. Therefore, this band, I've dialed it down to a red. Now I'm at about 60 degrees, okay? So I'm not down to 45, not up to 90, at about 60. And from that point there, then I'm trying to go through my external rotation. Now you can see I'm lacking about sort of 20, 30 degrees there. And that strength, plus actual range in the joint. And this is where I can try and focus on trying to really crank it back and get my range and get the strengthening within that last little bit where I'm lacking. And that's why the band can't be too heavy. It's got to be down a sort of a notch that this is not too hard the end range because that's where my weakness is. I'm going to really crank that back to get into that range. Now that's a really good one to do. Of course, there's internal as well, but the external one is the most important one to focus on. Now. Speaking of internal rotation, the subscat wall push off. Now, this is a really interesting one. And listen, it's not, it's not one we do often, but for this sort of you know, post surgical recovery, it's really important because most people who have had a shoulder recon are really struggling with the hand behind the back, especially frozen shoulder people. Now, my hand behind the back is getting there, it's getting better and better and better, but it tightens up every day. So, you've really got to focus on the strength in that range as well. There's no point just stretching it out and hoping for the best, you've actually got to work on your strength. Now one way you can do that in a closed chain position is actually do a wall push off. So you start off with your hand not too high. So around about maybe there, start off down there as long as that's not too tight for you. And you've got to try and keep your shoulder back as far as you can to the wall, okay? There's no point going up your back and having your shoulder forward, okay? So try and have it where your shoulder's down a little bit and you have your body on the wall and you're gonna push your body away with your hand. So you're doing an internal rotation type press, but you're doing it in like a closed chain position, okay? Instead of doing internal rotation this way, you're doing it in a very sort of compromised position, if you like, and trying to get a press movement there behind your back, okay? So you're pushing your body away. You're not trying to lift with your body. You're actually pushing your hand that way, which is like, in effect, an internal rotation type position. And that's gonna wind you up through here a little bit. You gotta be careful how tight that is, but it's a really good one for your strength. It also helps with your internal rotation range because you're getting that shoulder in that position for a longer period of time. So that's a really nice one as well. Now, above head, when you're doing we are next month, as in, in a week's time, I'm gonna be doing shoulder presses with a light kettlebell, okay? So we get into that point, we're above week 20, and we're gonna go into shoulder pressing. But within 17 to 20, we've gotta prep ourselves to be able to shoulder press. And so the best thing to do is use a band as your weight, so the press is graduated. So just put it on your foot, that sort of thing around here, easy to grab hold of it. Now, the band is really interesting because it'll give you a graduated pressing pressure going up. So at this point here, that band's reasonably tight, okay? Now, I can then look in a mirror in front of me and see where I'm gonna be. I wanna be on a 45 degree angle downwards with that upper arm, but a sort of almost a vertical with my upper, with my forearm. And when you press upwards, you're gonna go up into that triangle. Now, there's a point 
where my external rotation range, so if you're like me and you've lost some of that external rotation, you're still trying to get it back, and what it'll do is it'll try and roll your arm in. Okay? And a lot of people will do that. If they're missing external rotation strength and range, they roll their arms in like that. And you know, that seems fine. So you're going up into here, and that looks okay. But they don't get the strength in this position, especially if you want to overhead press. So what you've got to try and do is when you push up, stay externally rotated. And if you start tilting or rotating, that's as far as you had to go. So my mission over the next couple of weeks is to try and get a full press with the external rotation range without tilting or compensating. So when I go and do a kettlebell, I'm not compensating and doing funky things through the shoulder and getting my impingement back. So you've really got to get rid of the impingement. Part of doing that is functional movement. So just getting that movement correct, learning where your weaknesses are, and then working on that. And I know when I press up, my external rotation strength above head, my range of external rotation above head is still lacking and that's the thing I need to focus on to get that press right. Otherwise, I'm going to go into the next stage doing shoulder presses and getting a really sore shoulder because I'll just be jamming the heck out of it. So it's one way where you'll find out those weaknesses and then you start working on those and the, the front press with the band is one of the best exercises to do because at least you're doing loading work in the front and you're trying to learn how to press up like that and you're getting stronger in your rotator cuff but you'll see where your problems are and then you can work on those, work hard on those to get that movement correct. So to help you with that, you know, we talked about external rotation range. I've got to get this better and stop clunking and all sorts of things in my shoulder. One of the ways you can do it is a wall band pull apart. Now, you just got to be careful that you don't use a band that's too hard, okay? So I like to start off with a really sort of thin loop band. These ones, that's quite thick, okay? You probably can't see that, but that's quite a thick one. Now that's usually for around your knees for bridges and clams and that sort of thing. This one is way lighter, okay? And I would start with a very light band where you can stretch. See, I can stretch that quite a bit. So that one is going to be easy and kinder on you and at least give you the ability to maintain your forearm vertical. So the idea with this is the band is working on pulling your arm and you're fighting it external rotation range. So you're going to try and do that up the wall. So I'm going to try and keep my hands and my elbows and my forearms at the same distance apart as my shoulders. So when I go upwards like this, I'm going to slide up as though I've got kettlebells in my hands. I'm going to do a shoulder press, but I've got to try and keep the tension on the band out here. So I've got to really got to try and pull out and not let the band pull me in. So I can't do sort of press up and do that sort of thing because then I'm not getting any range there. I've really got to try and keep that forearm vertical. And if anything, if you can go wider, if your hands can go wider than your elbows, you're doing really well. So at this position, trying to go up. And again, you go as high as you can go. And when that starts pulling inwards, you just come down again. There's no point you trying to create a pattern of movement like that, you need to be able to try and go fully vertical up with that hand, then you know you're getting the external rotation range. So that exercise, again, that's going to help you with the front press. Remember the front press was the load and you stop before you start rolling in. This one doesn't have any load coming down, so it's kinder on your supraspinatus and the subacromial. It just really gets stuck into the external rotation range. And it's something, you know, remember band work is bringing up that strength, but that isometric strength above head is really hard to get. This is the ones to try and do it with. So just to recap, you're trying to go not super wide, but at least as wide as your elbows and keeping those elbows tucked in. Don't let them flare out. Tuck them in and then pressing up as though you've got a weight there, trying to keep that band really pulled out and then working in and try not to compensate. Tough stuff, but that's the sort of stuff you've got to nail before you go into the next stage, which is a lot more load, a lot more weights and a lot more overhead. See you next time.